Hi, this is Susie. I really like this picture because it pretty much explains and describes how I was feeling every time that I was trying to get onto a diet and lose weight and staying away from sugar. So what is sugar addiction? Well, the debate has raged recently about whether junk food, the hyper-processed, hyper-palatable food that has become our SAD, or SAD, which stands for Standard American Diet, is addictive in the same way that heroin or cocaine is addictive. It has been shown, and probably you already know some of these facts and information that we're going to talk about today, the foods with more sugar, foods that raise blood sugar even more than table sugar, such as white flour, white potatoes, and refined starch, have what is called a high glycemic index. Those foods trigger a special region in the brain, which is called the nucleus accumbens. This is shown in the following slide. The nucleus accumbens is known to be ground zero for conventional addiction, such as gambling or drug abuse. In the past, we thought that all of this was biological, that it was our genes, our lack of willpower, absence of responsibility, and so forth. Now we know that there are areas in the brain, such as the pleasure center, that light up in response to images of eating, savory, processed, or junk food. Now some of the things you're going to hear today might not be new, and others might change the way that you think about what you've been doing in your efforts to lose weight, feel healthier, or reduce your intake of sugar. Our goal today, in addition to give you some information, is to provide you with tools to feel empowered to lose weight a strategy to change the way you see yourself, what we call your blueprint, what you have been doing in the past so you can get rid of the guilt feelings of failure that have been holding you back. Get rid of the negative patterns of thought that keep you from succeeding. Also, we're going to offer replacements as far as nutrition goes and suggestions for activities that you can do every day to reduce weight and conquer sugar addiction. In our practice, we do this through hypnosis, massage therapy, yoga or tai chi sessions, and finally, of course, through nutritional changes, since every person is a different world. We'll explain this later when we talk about diets and why some diets don't work. Now, some studies done in the past suggest that first, the body responds quite differently to different calories, even if the protein, fat, and carbs, and taste are exactly the same. First, and second, foods that spike blood sugar are biologically addictive. This game-changing study has for a shift in the conversation about obesity in America there are 600,000 processed foods in the marketplace, 80% of which have added heated sugar. The average American consumes 22 teaspoons of sugar a day, mostly hidden, and the average teenage boy has 34 teaspoons a day, more than two 20-ounce canned sodas. One serving of Prego tomato sauce has more sugar than a serving of Oreo cookies. Sweetened yogurts can have more sugar than a can of soda. Sugar is the core ingredient used by the food industry to make bad ingredients, such as processed flour and chemicals, taste good. Our consumption has increased from 10 pounds per person in the 1800s to 140 pounds per person per year today. Each year, the average American also consumes 133 pounds of white or wheat flour, which raises blood sugar more than a table sugar or sucrose. The truth is that corporations have hijacked our brain chemistry and biology. 
I'm not saying that you don't have responsibility to be better and better yourself. I'm just saying that we were looking at our cravings all wrong. Here are five clues that you might be addicted to sugar, flour, and processed foods. You consume certain foods even if you're not hungry because of cravings. You worry about cutting down on certain foods. You feel sluggish or fatigued from overeating. You have health or social problems affecting school or work because of food issues and yet keep eating the way you despite negative consequences. You need more and more of the foods you crave to experience any pleasure or reduce negative emotions. If you are among those whose brain chemistry, taste bag and hormones have been hijacked by the food industry, up to 70% of us, including 40% of children do, then it's time to stop blaming yourself and consider a food rehab or a sugar detox. Yes, today in this course we're going to explore how to sugar detox, as sugar addiction is considered today a disease. Today I'm going to share with you how to hijack our brain and thinking patterns through real action, NLP, and a small replacement habits to get you into the sugar detox. Now I would like to hear from you. You can always answer questions and ask me questions through email. Have you experienced uncontrollable cravings for sugar and refined foods? How has it affected your life? How many diets have you tried? Have you blamed yourself for your behavior? Get into the email or call me on the phone and let's hear from some of you. In the next slide, we're going to explore other causes of sugar detox. And what sugar does to your body. I'll see you then.